In about mid-December, my YouTube channel hit a thousand subscribers and I became monetized. Now fast forward about six months later and I decided to withdraw my first paycheck from YouTube in order to buy a brand new PC. So let's see what kind of PC I bought. Now before we get into what my actual budget is for this PC, let me just set down a couple of ground rules for this build. All of the components have to be new, uh, so I can't buy secondhand components for cheaper, which honestly, if you have a small budget, I think that's a better idea to go secondhand, but I'm not going to do that. And the second rule is I have to actually buy all of these components. So there's no kind of trickery around here where I already have a bunch of them lying around and just use that instead so that I can try and try and save some of the money for myself. I have to actually buy buy all of the components at the price that I show them in the video. And with that out the way, let's see what kind of budget I have. Now to see how much money you've made on YouTube, you have to go into your analytics and then click on revenue. Now because I've never made a withdrawal before, I have to click on lifetime to see how much I've made. Now as you can see here, there's actually two bits of activity in my revenue generation. My YouTube channel was actually briefly monetized near the beginning of the existence of the channel, uh, but then YouTube changed its, um, its monetization requirements and I actually lost monetization for about a year. Now as you can see, the total is not a huge amount, it's 381 US dollars. Now because I don't live in the United States, this doesn't really help me much, so I'm gonna convert it into Canadian dollars, and it gets to about 510 Canadian dollars. Now if you've ever built a PC in Canada, you'll realize that 510 Canadian dollars is not a lot to build a PC with, but let's see what we can get. And here we have all the components for the PC. And honestly, <laughs> the pile is not quite as big as I thought it was going to be. And the more eagle-eyed of you probably would have realized there's no graphics card in this pile. That's because it's really difficult to get a discrete graphics card in a system that costs not much more than an RTX 2060. And I wanted to keep future upgradability in mind so that if you make a bit more money later down the line, you can drop in a new graphics card. Okay, let's do a quick breakdown of the components. The CPU the CPU I chose is an AMD 2400G, which I've used a lot on this channel, but it's because it's amazing value for money. For $140 on Amazon now, you can get a CPU, a GPU, and an air cooler. I think that's great. Then, the SSD by Terosis, I think it's pronounced. Never heard of this company before, and I, I hope it's okay. It's a 128 gig drive, and I think it's gonna make a big difference for the actual usability of this system. Then as far as RAM goes, that's one of the biggest issues for this CPU in a very budget build, is that it has quite high requirements for RAM bandwidth, so you need pretty fast memory. And the best I could do was DDR4-2666, and it's eight gigs of it, which isn't quite enough, but that's okay. Uh, it's a kit by, K by Patriot, it's called the Viper RAM, and it's super bling, but we'll get into that a bit later. And then when it comes to the power supply, we have a 450 watt, 80 plus bronze unit from EVGA. This should be enough for any reasonable graphics card you'd want to drop into this system later down the line. So if you want to drop in something like a GTX 1660 Ti, this should have you covered. And then the motherboard is probably one of the more basic motherboards that Gigabyte makes. It's a B450M DS3, and this is actually an MATX power supply. That's one of the things that I'm the most excited about for this build is the form factor because the case is also MATX and it's a Versa H17 Thermaltake case and all of these components I bought for 370 US dollars or the equivalent of that after tax and shipping. So let's build it and see how it performs.
<laughs> now there's actually a law that dictates that every single montage, regardless of what it's about, has to have bad 80s pop music playing over it. So unfortunately I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> but as far as the build process went, it actually was a really easy PC to build. And by some weird fluke, all of it matches really well. It actually looks amazing, especially considering the budget. Honestly, it wasn't deliberate. I just kind of chose the cheapest component in every category and they just happened to work together really well. So let's just have a bit of a moment to appreciate how awesome the PC looks. Honestly, cable management was really easy. I'm very impressed with this case. I think I'm gonna do a separate review of it. And I really like the form factor. MATX is really nice because it just, it, it looks so cute. But it's not ITX cute, but it's it's still it's still a really great looking system. Now with the build experience and the looks out of the way, let's see how this PC performs. Let's see how much gaming performance I can get for my YouTube dollars. Now I tested nine games and all of them at between low and medium settings at 1080p. And I was actually quite surprised. The PC performs quite well. You can tell that there isn't quite enough RAM, especially when looking at kind of what the system is doing with MSI Afterburner. There really is, it's, it's at the limit all the time and especially in Apex Legends you could kind of feel it. Now these are the actual benchmarks and you can play games comfortably with this system and I think that's really impressive for $370 considering that all of the components are new. One thing that I will say and that you can see in all of these benchmarks is that the 0.1% lows are quite low and I honestly think that's got to do with the limited RAM space because the CPU and the GPU actually have to share RAM. So two gig is allocated to the GPU and then the rest of the six gig is allocated to the CPU and that just kind of isn't enough for gaming these days. So if you can push your budget, if you wanna build something similar, the first upgrade I would recommend is getting another eight gigs of RAM, especially considering the fact that it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. And then when it comes to noise, the PC is really quiet. I mean, if you listen to it now, and then in regards to the performance of this super cheap SSD, it's actually pretty good. Like it's way better than I thought it was gonna be. And it performs better than a lot of kind of these budget SSD options. Although as far as long-term reliability goes, I have no idea. I've only been using it for the last two days. And with that, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this PC. And I'd also be really interested to see what a similar spec PC would cost in the country that you live. So if you have time to calculate that kind of thing, let me know. I'd, I'd be really interested and I'm sure everybody else would be. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.